Hey guys, I'm Carla Dennis, and I want to talk to you about how to be a good parent to teenagers. Teenage years are such trying years, and I know it can be extremely stressful. Raising four sons through teenage years, I definitely understand and get it. I can remember one time my son said to me, you know what mom stands for? It stands for mommy or monster. Because on any given day, they consider me their mother, and on other days, they consider me a monster. Well, I'm going to give you some tips to deal with all of that. Tip number one is build trust. It is so important to build trust with your kids, especially when they're in those teenage years. Why do I say it's important to build trust? Because when they are in those teenage years, this is when they are trying to figure themselves out. And you really, really got to hunker down and be a good parent. And sometimes you're going to have to tell your kids no, and they're not going to understand why. So building that trust is going to allow your kids to walk on faith with you when they lack their own understanding. I used to say to my kids, my advice to you is as pure as the driven snow, literally snowflakes dropping. That's my advice to you because I'm your mom. So I'm going to give you pure advice only for your well-being, but they could only accept that advice if I had built trust with them over time. So how do you do that? How do you build trust with your kids over time? You have to be consistent with your children. You have to show up every single time and you have to do what you say you're going to do. Building trust with your kids is going to pay dividends later on and is one of the most important things that you can do as a parent trying to parent kids through teenage years. One of the other strategies is to continue that mommy and me time. Remember when you were younger with your kids, when they were just babies and you would take them maybe to mommy and me or daddy and me time where you would just spend time with your kids by themselves. It's still important to do that. The older your kids get, believe it or not, the more time you need to spend with your kids. Many times people say, I can't wait for my kids to grow up so they can start doing things on their own. But that's really the time that you need to spend more time with them, more face time, more conversation time, get into their space more often. Why do I say that? Because other people are getting into their space. Other people are getting into their ears. They're consuming information from so many different angles. It's important that they're consuming the information that you want them to hear. So spending time with your kid, it's consistent time where they know you're going to be there for them. It gives them an opportunity to talk to you. It doesn't have to be time where you're sitting them down to talk to them about anything. It could be going to go get ice cream. I used to literally take my sons to go get Baskin Robin ice cream and I would have routines with all four of them and I would have a routine that I would do with just one of them at a time because I wanted them to know that that was our time together that they can talk to me or they could be in complete silence but that was going to be the time that they were going to be able to spend with their mother and I can honestly tell you that was some of the best times because my kids would tell me a lot of things during that time period so having that one-on-one -on -one mommy and me time or daddy and me time is extremely important even during those teenage years. The other strategy is keep your standards high. That's so important. I was never going to let down my standards just because my kids wanted me to. A good example of that was my kids would always say, hey mom, I want to go to this party on a Friday night and I want to come in at one o'clock in the morning or whatever the case may be. If my standard was no parties, my standard was no parties. I didn't care if Johnny and John or whomever was having a party at whomever's house. My standard was you did not go to parties and that's just how it was. I never allowed them to spend the night over others' houses. They had a home. The party was always going to be at my house. So I never relaxed my standards under any set of circumstances whatsoever. I set the vision for my kids. I told my kids there would not be any drinking, there would not be any drugs, that they had to be in at a certain time. 
And I never let go of those standards, not even once. And it wasn't always comfortable. I'm gonna give an example of when it wasn't comfortable. I told my kids that they had to always go to school and they had to always get good grades. And that if they ever wanted to do something, I was always gonna check their grades to see where they were. I'll never forget that my sons, Kenneth and Carlton, they, I think it was like either homecoming or some Sadie's dance or something that they were gonna go to. They had dates lined up, they had their outfits picked out. And I said, okay, before you go, you need to bring me your grades. And their grades were not where they're supposed to be. Supposedly the teacher didn't update the grades. And I told them, you're responsible for your grades, not your teacher. If your grades are not updated, that is not my problem. And on that day, they stood two girls up for that dance because I wasn't letting one go without the other. And I can tell you, they were so upset. And on that day, I was probably a monster. When they went back to school that Monday, they told me how they were ridiculed and how the other kids were like, oh my gosh, you stood up your dates. I didn't care, I maintained my standard. And the reason why is, it's better that they leave a girl and they not take them to maybe a homecoming than they actually leave their family later on down the road because they didn't do something they were supposed to do. So I wasn't gonna let my standards down and I'm gonna tell you parents, set the bar very, very high and do not let it go. Because if you do, your kids will start to slowly move away and will not become good individuals. So keep the standards high at all times. Another tip I wanna give you is keep open lines of communication. This is so critical, especially in the teenage years. So how did I manage to do that? I would be the person that would volunteer to drive my kids places. I would take the kids to school early on before they started driving themselves. And I would pick up as many kids as I could. I had an SUV and I would just let the kids be in my car and I would just listen. Just listen to the conversations. I would never react, I would never respond. And when my kids said they wanted to tell me something, I would just let them tell me. I never reacted, I never responded. Did I wanna react? Absolutely. Were there times I wanted to throw up in the back of my mouth and did? Absolutely. But the reason why I didn't respond is because I did not want to show any judgment. If I want those lines of communication to be open between me and my kids, I had to make it safe. I had to make it okay for them to tell me the things that probably no parent wants to hear that their kids were involved in or that something happened, but I did not respond. I chose other ways to communicate with my kids by using examples at another time. So if my kids wanted to tell me about, hey, they went to a party and they were offered a drink and maybe they had a drink or tasted some alcohol, I didn't respond, although I might have been fuming going, oh my God, I told you not to do that, right? But I could not let them see me in that state of mind. But later on, I would come back and I would give an example of the consequences of drinking early on. I would tell them the real life stories about people in my family who were drinking, people in my family that literally got arrested for drinking and driving. And I would tell them in a non-threatening manner. And whatever we tell our kids, they hear, they're listening, they may not comment, but it doesn't go in one ear and out the other. So making sure you keep those open lines of communication is very important. Making sure you make it safe, making sure you don't respond, making sure that you know that you gotta circle back and find a non-threatening way to communicate is going to be really important to making sure that you're a good parent to teenage kids. The other thing that's really important and another tip is making sure you provide rules and consequences. And you gotta hold those rules and hold those consequences. That's important. And remember, you're not your kid's friend. You are the parent. I am not trying to be the friends to my kids. Once my kids are grown and they're living on their own and on the other side of my door, then we can have a different type of relationship. But as a parent, it is my job to set the rules. It is my job to establish consequences. I will never forget my son Carlton. He mentioned to me one time, he goes, hey mom, I wanna get my ear pierced. And I said, you will absolutely not get your ear pierced. 
Lo and behold, my challenged child comes home with his ear pierced. Can you believe it? Oh yeah, he did. But let me tell you, he got some serious consequences when he did that because I told him no, that that was not going to happen. So when he did that, guess what happened? I literally took the earring out of his ear. It wasn't nice, but I literally snatched it out of his ear. I also told his football coach that he was not playing that football game, that he was off the team. And let me tell you, that was one of the things that my kids enjoy more than anything else, playing football. The coach had a conversation with him and told him, your mother said you're out. So he had to sit out a game. And that hurt his feelings because my son was a star player at that particular time. And I did not care that the other parents thought it was harsh that my kid wasn't playing football. I did not care that a starter was not gonna play that day. What I cared about was the lesson that my child was going to learn. So as a parent, it is extremely important that you hold rules and that there are consequences for not following the rules. If you become a parent that's like a jellyfish on any given day, you're changing the rules, then you know what? Your kid is going to do whatever they want when they want and they won't respect authority. Establish rules, hold the rules, and make sure there are consequences of not following the rules. The other tip is make sure you as a parent model the discipline and the rules that you want your kids to follow. You have to be a good role model for your kids. I have always been a very disciplined individual. And so when it came time to work, I always got myself up and got to work on time. I'm a business owner and even a business owner, if my business has hours, I want my kids to see that I'm up, I'm being responsible and I'm holding myself to the same standard that I'm gonna hold them to. I always make sure that I fulfill on my commitments and do the things that I say I'm going to do. And when I don't do the things that I say I'm going to do, how do I expect my kids to do the things that I ask of them? So we have to model what we want our kids to do. I make sure I show up every time. I'm always on time for my meetings. I'm on time for my events. If I go to a parent teacher conference, I am on time for that conference. I come prepared, I come ready. I stay disciplined in the things that I want to do. As a parent, we may want to break down. We may want to cry. We may want to turn it up and start drinking because we're overwhelmed. But my kids never, ever saw me in that light. They never saw me breaking down. It was difficult, but I held myself to a standard to be the parent that my kids could look up to. Not only my kids, but other kids looked up to me as well. My kids attended a parochial school where football was a big theme for them. And on Friday nights, there was a lot of drinking going on at tailgate parties and so forth. I never chose to participate in that. And the reason why was because I was still responsible for my kids. I still needed to drive my kids home and I needed my kids to see me always ready to be a parent. And other kids saw that too. So my house was always the house that kids knew that they could come to as a safe house. They knew they could always get in my car because I held myself to a standard. As a parent, it's important to model the person that you want your kids to be. And when you're parenting teenagers, it is so important that you model the person you want your kids to be, that you set rules from the very beginning, that you set consequences, that you give your kids that time, and that you always give your kids a safe place to communicate with you and that you build trust. If you like this video, I want you to comment, like, and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you on the next video.